So what we've done already is we've already taken off the side panelling here, uh, which we didn't show you because it's obvious and it's a little bit boring. So there's just a few bolts around and pop them off the rubber grommets. Then take off the seat, which isn't so easy, but again, is easily found in the service manual. Um, the next real stage is to take the tank off, which is a little bit more complicated because obviously it involves electrics and fuel. The first pro step in the process is to do this nut here, which is a 12 mil. So we'll take that off. We'll take that off now. Come off so easy. Might as well have a bit of humour. <laughs> Ravening it. That comes off there. Which means you should be able to lift the rear of the tank up and away, like that. And it should slide backwards away like that and just come straight up. So the next thing to do is to remove the connectors. There's some electrical connectors in here uh, for which you're going to need a possibly a flathead screwdriver if you can't get in with your fingernails. Luckily, I think I might just be able to do it with my old fingernails. Oh, he lied. No, he didn't. There we go. A um, couple of connectors for the fuel sensors and other such parts. Okay, so they have little flick-up tabs, and you just pull them out like that. The next step is to take off the fuel hose, which is up here, no, the, the fuel pump, which should have two little push tabs on it and it should just clip off. This is obviously a little fiddly and it is always useful to have a friend help you with this. One to lift the tank up, the other to pull off all the little cables. And it just requires a little bit of working it loose and a little bit of fiddling around to be honest. The, uh, it's always worth being mindful though of petrol because you're going to be there's going to be a little petrol left in the lines. It shouldn't leak out the tank. If it starts leaking out the tank, then you've got problems. So, uh, uh, yeah, be aware of that. But um, always have a few towels around just in case. And that's that. That's the tank off. And then <clears throat> get the nice uh, brand new one. And uh, we'll just compare the colour and stuff in there. Look. That's the old one. And then that's the new one. Look. Nice and clean. You can see through the side there as well. You can t see the difference in colour. But there we are. So that's why it's a good idea to do this because it helps your engine to breathe better. This is straightforward as, as it can possibly be. You literally just lower the new filter back in, making sure you don't catch any of the cables or introduce any debris. Make sure it's seated nice and firmly. Press it down. Get the. Yeah, don't drop any of the uh, screws, that's a bad idea. Get the top, again check there's no debris that you're going to introduce into the engine and just fit that back down into place. This can sometimes be a bit of a fiddle as well because there's a little snorkel in the inside. But it just needs a bit of bit of patience and a little bit of a, a little bit of a wiggle just to get it down and into place. There we are. No problem. And then simply reintroduce the screws. And on this bike, it's not too bad because there's only two one on this side and one on the other. These screws don't have to be done up fantastically tight, just enough to keep a good airtight seal on the on the on the plastic. You just do them up hand, basically just hand tight, because otherwise next time you come to un undo it, uh, you'll have a nightmare. And that's it. That's how. That's just. Let's change the air filter. No problem. Quick and simple. Right. Okay. So the final stage of this uh, service is to replace the spark plugs. You don't necessarily have to replace the spark plugs, but. Um, on this occasion, we got all the kit as a bundle, so uh, it, it's uh, what we're going to do. So the first step is to get your uh, your coils, locate them wherever they might be on your bike. Um, that might necessitate taking the tank off and various other pieces. 
uh, the, f- the best thing to do is to do them one at a time because it's very important that the right leads and the right H uh, the right HC leads and the right coils go to the right cylinder. Otherwise, the engine won't fire. The first thing to do is, if you possibly can, is to remove the cable from the back, which gives you the best uh, access. And then the way to pull the on most bikes is to just pull these up and they'll click out like that, and you just pull it out and away. Don't drop these inside there's a, a ceramic coated copper core and if that breaks it'll break the uh, break it'll break the connection and you won't get a, uh, a spark the next step is to get your um, on the, in this case 10 millimeter spark plug socket the best way I find is to get it in there and locate it and to push it down to locate on top of the spark plug because there's a rubber in the top of the uh, socket which grips and pulls out the spark plug out of its house they shouldn't be too tight and if you're experiencing problems be very careful because it's easy to damage the tops of uh, the cylinder head and you don't want to be damaging your cylinder head at any time because trust me they're expensive and you know cost a lot if you want someone to fix your engine for you so yeah just Whack out your spark plug. Once, on, and once it's completely undone, like like so, you'll feel it rattling around in there. You should be able to lift up, and that one hasn't come out, which is always a possibility. There we go. That one's come out. Obviously, it's very important at this stage to make sure that there's no debris around the area so that you don't knock anything into your engine. Um, Another little tip that I always use. Good little tip from uh, from the pros is uh, a little bit of copper grease from Acropovic, um, which if you just put it on the th- put it on the th- head of y- on the thread of your uh, spark plugs, stops them from seizing in due to heat. The other thing you should do, as well, before you uh, before you install any spark plug, is check the gap with a feeler gauge. Uh, normally, they come pre-gapped, and um, from uh, from the manufacturers, and they're pretty good. We've already feeler gauged these ones with uh, with the with the with the gauge, and uh, and they're all good to go because if you don't do that you don't get a strong spark force it into the socket into the rubber so that it locates in there with your thumbs on the on the tops there on the little crush washer so that way it won't fall out that way you can lower it into the spark plug into the cylinder head there and the best way to do this is rotate counterclockwise in a loosening fashion until it clicks because that will tell you that the, the threads are all lined up and then you can start tightening it down. The worst thing you can do with spark plugs is to cross the threads in your cylinder head. Because if you do that, that's it. Game over. You're not going to be uh, you're not going to be using that engine any much more. All right. So tighten that down and uh, get it finger tight. Now the next thing is to get the torque wrench. Right, so we have the torque wrench set to 13 newton meters, which is correct for the uh, for the Z750. Always check your service manual. Connect that up to your spark plug socket, and then tighten it down until you hear one click. It is very important not to over tighten spark plugs, as I said before, because if you do, you're in a world of trouble. Just be patient with the spark, with the thing. There we go, look. One click, just like that. So just check it a couple of times. And that's all good to go. Now the next step is to replace the ignition coil. Into the, uh, into the cylinder head. Now seat it down, and what you should hear is a series of little clicks when you seat this down properly and it should should click several times 
that's that's the the ignition coil seating onto the head of the uh, spark plug. There we go. Those are the clicks. And once it doesn't click anymore, and it's nice and secure, that's that back in. Reattach your HT lead till that snaps on, and that's that done. Basically, repeat for all other th the other spark plugs on your bike, depending whether it's four, three, or two cylinders, and you're good to go. Right, okay, the next step is reassembly of the bike. So uh, all the spark plugs are now done, oil filter is done, uh, uh, air filter in fact is done, and the oil change is done earlier. Um, the cross members put back on. The next ta task to do is to get the tank on. Um, basically this is the reverse order of, um, of uh, the disassembly, but obviously a quick word just to say um, it's easiest to do with two people than it is on your own. And always be careful when uh, manoeuvring the tank because obviously there's fuel in the uh, uh, in the lines and things, and you don't want to spill that on a on a on an engine that's about to get hot. Uh, obviously, if there is a spillage of fuel, wash it off clearly. Uh, wash it off uh, thoroughly and um, make sure that there's no uh, fuel left on the bike. Check all of your lines and your leads that you may have taken off or tugged on to make a we are securely connected. Um, because the worst thing to have happen is to do all this, go to start your bike and nothing happen just because one of these leads isn't isn't properly seated in place. So anything you may have come into contact with, just give it a little push back in and make sure everything's nicely seated and that you've got all of the leads back in the right place. And uh, make sure also you remember which leads you've taken out and then make sure there aren't any ones hidden like behind these frames. Because if one gets hidden down there and you put it back on, you've got no fuel pump you'll be a little bit concerned when you thumb that starter button and nothing happens. So right, okay, next next thing uh, to do is to get the tank on. Okay, here we go with the fuel tank back on. So just uh, hold it in um, roughly in the right place and tilt it backwards. So if Matt just uh, holds it up like that for me, Pretty which good. means you can have a nice view underneath. The first thing to do for safety reasons is to get the fuel line back on because that stops any excess fuel from leaking out, clipping that back on and making sure it's secure. Normally things are easier to get back on than taking them apart, especially with the electric connectors. And we've got the, uh, the pump connector here, should just slot straight back in and click. And the fuel level, you know, fuel uh, gauge indicator, click back together, those are secure. Make sure the wires are routed properly. And then route the breather hose back down through the other side making sure that that's out of tuck, nicely tucked out of the way. Let's ask is to lower this down. Just put that into place down here. Right, okay, so the bike's now back together. It's all been serviced. Um, hopefully we managed to provide a little bit of help to you guys and uh, an instructional, uh, in our instructional video. Nice. Um, yeah. She's looking good, she sounds good, hopefully she runs good, we'll give her a test. And I'm looking forward to taking her out on the road and seeing the difference. Should run a lot smoother, maybe a bit faster, keep those wheelies going. Yeah. So, it's good night from him. Good night from him. <laughs>